Hey, come with me. You are in for an incredible treat. Britain's never seen this place. I'm seeing it for the first time, and so are you. This is a special Cadillac Heritage Museum. It's not even open to the public. They have Cadillacs here like no one else. Come and have a look. We're going to meet Greg Wallace. He's the director of the Historical Museum here for the Cadillac Motor Company, and here he is now. Greg? Welcome. Adrian, good to meet you. You have a wonderful place here. Tell me a little bit of, in general what it all means to somebody uh, that's interested in Cadillacs. Well, Cadillac has been the leader in innovation and technology and styling uh, for the better part of the last hundred years. And uh, in our collection here we have a, uh, a representation of all the great things that happened at Cadillac in the last hundred years. This room represents what years from the earliest From to... 1903 up through the uh, 90s. Incredible. So this is 1903. This is a 1903 Model A runabout. Uh, it's the First model Cadillac, it features the single cylinder engine, which uh, made right. 10 horsepower, and the car would go upwards of 30 miles per hour. Air conditioning, too. Air conditioning. Well. Right. This is the 1959 Eldorado Barrettes convertible, 59. and this is the ultimate in tail fins. Uh, the tail fin uh, was inspired on the 1948 Cadillac by the P-38 Lightning aircraft. Uh, it evolved from a uh, small bump on the back mm -hmm. fender up until you see uh, a 45-inch tall right. uh, tail fin. Your colleague was telling me earlier today that uh, that was because there was not a lot of work for auto designers during the war, so they went to look at some aircraft, and that's what inspired? Well, I think it's uh, when, you, when you look at the whole art and science theme, uh, uh, aircraft has always been the pinnacle of science, uh, right. and, and, it, and it falls hand in hand with, uh, with the design of the vehicles right. as well. Tell me what else you've got for me. Something over here is really old. I don't know where it stands in the heritage, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. We have, we have a very unique car here. This is the first concept vehicle that Cadillac uh, built. Uh, it's the first closed-bodied automobile. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry Leland, who you see pictured here, this was his personal car. Really? Uh, the reason why the car is so tall is Henry Leland was very tall as well. Uh, but, uh, That's Henry incredible. Figured, Henry figured that if it worked for horse-drawn carriages, it ought to work for the automobile. So right. here we have the Osceola, which was named after the famous Seminole Indian chief. Beautiful color combination here. Tell me about this one. This is a LaSalle? This is a 27 LaSalle. Uh, the LaSalle was an entry-level Cadillac. It filled the price gap between the highest-priced Buick and the lowest-priced Cadillac. Right. It's also the first car to be exclusively designed by an automobile stylist. What year are we looking at here? This is 1948. This is the first all-new body style for Cadillac uh, after the Second World War. Uh, it was wow. designed inspired off the P-38 Lightning aircraft, which was a famous World War, World War II uh, fighter aircraft. Right. Uh, that aircraft featured twin rudder booms as well as radiator duct openings in the side of its fuselage, and they mm -hmm. incorporated those styling Down the back there, yeah. into the... Uh, 4860 special. And look at the chrome on there. It's unbelievable the amount of chrome on that car. Absolutely fantastic. I guess the, uh, the, the manufacturing prices are exorbitant to give us chrome like that nowadays. Next in the collection, Adrian, we have a 1953 Eldorado. This Beautiful. was the first year for the Eldorado nameplate. Mm -hmm. It features wraparound windshield, hooded headlamps, as well as a familiar dip in the window uh, sill area, right. uh, which is a hallmark styling cue of uh, Cadillacs throughout that 50 era. Is it my eyes, or is that is there a smoked uh, finish on there? It has uh, what they call cobalt blue metal flake. Right. Uh, very unique color for the yeah, Cadillac. Yeah, it is. It's a very unique color. Car also features Autronic Eye, which is uh, one of the first nighttime uh, driving uh, aids, uh, which shuts off your high beam headlights with oncoming traffic, which is placed on the dash. This is a 1933 uh, type 355C V8 Cadillac. Right. Uh, this was the entry-level Cadillac of that period of time. Uh, uh, by 1933, we built V8s, V12s, and V16s. Wow. Uh, the V16 you see behind is the 31. Uh, which 16, is 16, that's incredible. Yep, 452 cubic inches, 7.4 liter. Wow. Uh, also features wood trim inside with German silver inlay. Mm -hmm. It was the first use of breezy vent windows, which uh, allows you to... Uh, uh, have a draft free ventilation. That's right. how they advertised it. I think some of our British viewers might know that window idea as a, as a quarter light, as we might call them. Correct. And so we uh, we're looking at one of the original applications of that. Absolutely, Amazing. this is the original. Uh, safety features have always been also a very major concern of Cadillacs, and this has one of the safety uh, door latches. Uh, one of the biggest problems with door latches on the early cars was is in a collision or. Uh, the, the striker would bypass the, uh, uh, the latch and cause mm -hmm. the door to pop open. Well, if you see here, you have this dovetail that fits right. into a slot and it does not allow the door to move up right. and down. Like a keystone almost. Keeps, keeps it closed. Right. Very good. 
Adrian, this is the 1959 Cyclone. It was uh, the Motorama car for Cadillac in 1959. What do you mean by Motorama? Let's just talk about that briefly. Uh, General Motors uh, used to feature cars in what they called a Motorama, and it gave people a glimpse of what the future was like in the right, technology okay. for General Motors. Very and they, good. And they ran those from the 50s up through the early 60s. Mm -hmm. Uh, in 1959, they featured this car as a Cadillac. It has uh, some advanced uh, uh, technology as well. It has radar sensing domes in the front. Radar sensing? Gives you uh, approximately what you're approaching in feet, as well as how many feet you need to stop the car. But do you mean radar sensing as in a fuzz buster? It has radar dishes underneath the front domes, and what it does is give you approximately what you're approaching. Really? Uh, on a gauge. Isn't that something? Also has a one-piece bubble top that uh, slides, uh, that clamshells over. Mm -hmm. uh, Front mounted engine with rear mounted transmission and transaxle, very similar to what the C5 Corvette is today and some earlier Porsches and that kind of stuff. So, amazing. Uh, technology is very high on this early car. The door is very unique is as it pulls out like a plug door and then slides down the length of the body. Look at that. That's and, amazing. And you see that feature on some of our vans. So, a right. lot of the technology you see on these early concept vehicles sure. do ap actually make it to Every something. side door on vans today, Fords or what have you, they've sure. all got that now. Wow. Adrian, this is the 1953 Le Mans Motorama car. This is a very interesting car as well. This car actually uh, uh, left General Motors and went to Bud Goodman, who was mm -hmm. uh, head of Fisher Body at the time. Sure. Uh, the car came back under Harley Earl's direction and received a restyle. Beautiful. Uh, they added the uh, quad headlamps to the car, as well as uh, some treatments to the tail fins. This is Audrey Hepburn to me, Greta Garbo. Very, very much so, 50s. Is it? Yeah. Uh, a lot of aircraft inspired design. Uh, you can see the uh, radiator duct openings like I talked about on the 60 Special. Mm -hmm. uh, in some form they've used that styling cue. Uh, the, air, the gauges inside are aircraft inspired. It's also a fiberglass car. Is it? Uh, General Motors introduced fiberglass cars in 1953 on the uh, Corvette, but uh, this is more than likely with some sort of a styling cue, or right. styling ex exercise. Now, what was the reason for fiberglass? Why did General Motors introduce fiberglass? I think fiberglass was an alternative uh, to metal. It didn't rust. Uh, uh, it was lightweight, mm -hmm. uh, very strong. Greg, I see another Eldorado here. It's obviously got some significance if it's in this building. Yes, this is the Eldorado Brome. Uh, these were built from 1957 to 1960 in very limited numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, for 57, they built 400 of these, and they feature things you take for granted as new and innovative. Really? Uh, the car has uh, memory seats, what they called favorite position. Really? Uh, the car has air ride suspension, sand cast aluminum bumpers, forged aluminum wheels, first use of narrow white wall tires on an automobile. Things that today we take for granted, but they were really in effect, in use back then and very effective. But this one looks kind of Texas to me. Yeah, it's a big car. It's uh, the very last of the American made convertibles. Uh, Cadillac held out one extra year and built convertibles in 1976, so mm -hmm. as a result we sold 14,000 of them. Right. Uh, being 1976 was uh, our bicentennial year here in the United States, they built 200. The last 200 were built uh, were bicentennials, and they featured the red and uh, blue striping as well as the sure. uh, red piping on the interior. Adrian, why don't you push that button in the center of that light there? This one here? Yes. Oh my God. What that does is conceal the uh, gas Look at fill. That. Uh, this is one of the features of a Cadillac from 1941 through 1958 and is the subject of many of a gas station story uh, with people trying to find a gas fill for these early cars. Is that right? Well, we've had a great time seeing all of the history of Cadillac here, Greg, but I understand you have one special concept car that we should have a look at that's really a, a nod to the future. Absolutely, and I'd like to introduce you to uh, Jan Willem Vester, who is our Assistant uh, General Manager of uh, Communications. Very good. You have a car to show me, I understand. Let's go see it. Great. Jan Willem, this is the future of Cadillac. What yes. we're seeing here is a concept car. Yes. Tell me just, uh, for the viewers that aren't familiar with what a concept car is, what does it do for a car company like GM? Why are you building one of these concept cars? Well, it announces uh, in a very, very early stage what people can expect in a few years' time down the road. So this is not in production yet. If this, yet. It is a concept car just to feel the market out, to feel what people are getting, get the buzz and see what happens in the press. Yeah and then you move ahead to uh, production. Exactly. All yeah. right, and this is the Evoque. This is the Evoque uh, Luxury Roadster. It is a vehicle, uh, a, a convertible, but with a retractable hardtop. So it's, it's a hardtop, so it's, the, let's say, the ideal combination of both a coupe 
and a convertible. So this is completely stowed behind the seats. Sure. When you look at it from a distance, it doesn't look like a Cadillac. It looks like uh, a Ferrari or it looks like a Bricklin or it looks like something else other than the saloons we've been seeing. Well, I take that as a compliment, but uh, on the other hand, it has tons of Cadillac brand character as we, as we call it. Sure. Take, take again the Egg Crate Grill, you know, that sure. really shouts Cadillac. That's right. Then again, the vertical uh, headlights which here yeah, yeah. And, and stacked with the with the fog lamps mm -hmm. which really mirrors the vertical taillights in the rear Very and good. uh and then also you see that that chiseled look the crisp and clear lines that you also have seen on the cadillacs of the 60s correct so basically it's taking that theme and gives that a very modern translation now, Adrian, it was really a delight to uh, give you a glimpse of the future, but of course what's also very important for us is the kind of vehicles that we sell today. And In I 2001. Wanna... Exactly, and I want to show you that right now. Beautiful. Let's have a good, uh, good look at that. Well, Jan Willem, I've had a great time looking inside and seeing the amazing heritage that Cadillac has. Let's bring it up to date now and see something on the parking lot. This is a brand new one, I understand. Yeah, it's a 2000 Cadillac DeVille DTS, top of the line. Now, walk around the car and tell me some of the things that are uh, true to the form and to the character of the old Cadillacs that we've seen indoors. Some of the things that are synonymous in this 2001. Yes. Uh, first of all, of course, the so-called egg crate grill. Mm -hmm. uh, and here in its most modern form with the uh, night vision camera right in the middle of it but that egg crate grill really goes back to wow. 1940 uh, where it was first introduced and we have uh, maintained that and mm -hmm. it's really as we call it a very important part of the Cadillac brand character the egg crate grill egg crate grill you, you and, see that already and the circle decades. in the middle is actually the night vision that's the night vision camera how yeah. does that work? Tell me briefly about that technology. Uh, it works with uh, infrared technology right. and uh, uh, makes it possible for you to see uh, three to five times further than with regular headlights. It is projected uh, right there on the windscreen in a head-up display. During Desert Storm, U.S. soldiers used a form of thermal or infrared imaging for their nighttime maneuvers. Cadillac with the help of the Raytheon Systems Company, is using the same technology to revolutionize driving safety and security. Cadillac engineer uh, Ed Zellner images. explains how the night vision the system images. works. In the grill, we have a night vision camera that picks up the differences in the temperature of the outside surroundings. That camera then translates the image to a small picture tube-like device that then projects that image up onto the windshield. Zellner says hot objects appear white and cooler objects appear black with night vision. Car buyer Gary Steppen had no idea what he might see when he volunteered to take a test drive. There was a deer or something there, or a dog. The minute it moved, my eyes caught it. Immediately, our eyes couldn't compete with Gary. Night vision allows a driver to see three to five times farther than with low beam headlights. And that's important if you consider that nighttime driving represents only about a quarter of total driving, but accounts for more than half of all traffic fatalities. The car has a lot of different characters in itself. Uh -huh. Indeed, when you drive at, at low speed, uh, then maybe uh, the car feels really softly sprung. Right. But what you will feel when you really uh, 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 go to higher speeds and the car feels that you're going into some more serious cornering right. and the suspension st system stiffens up. Jan Willem, tell me what is the uh, target demographic for such a beautiful car like the Cadillac? Um, obviously we have uh, really a vast amount of traditional uh, Cadillac owners, really a very a loyal uh, customer base. Right. I, this, this model sells at a rate of 105,000 a year. Is that and, right? and, and, and with that, you can really say that it is the, the, the backbone of Cadillac sales since our total sales worldwide are at 200,000. So mm -hmm. this model alone counts for, for over half, so roughly half of all the sales. One last thing before we go. Earlier, you heard us talk about the petrol or the gas cap being underneath the lens on the Cadillac. The real story behind it, God's honest truth, Harley Earl, chief of Cadillac design from 27 to about 1960, came through one day, the shop, and he said, well, where's the gas filler cap? Someone on the floor didn't want to let him down. There wasn't one right here, so they just said, it's underneath the tail lens. He loved the idea. A design feature on the Cadillac that actually happened because of an oversight.